What is up, Element 26 family? How are you? I got three tips today about plantar fasciitis and how to relieve those symptoms at home. So plantar fasciitis typically comes on because we're doing a lot of jumping, running, repetitive action with the foot and ankle. And when that happens, that band you have at the bottom of your foot, which many of you are familiar with, most likely, uh, runs from here to here. That band gets really cranky. So you usually get pain like right at the base here. Sometimes people get pain up here, which might be something else possibly referred from plantar fasciitis. Um, but that plantar fascia turns into plantar fasciitis, hence the itis, inflammation. And then it limits pretty much everything else you're doing. So squatting becomes painful, uh, lunging becomes painful, trying to run again becomes painful. So I wanna go through a couple other tips or three tips so we're gonna roll, stretch, and stabilize. And those things are gonna help you be able to manage some of those symptoms that you're having. The big key for a lot of these plantar fasciitis things is gonna be programming and volume management. But for the time being, trying these three things will help you get through some of the symptoms that you're having. So let's talk quickly about rolling. So that, that point I was talking about from here to here, that arch of your foot where that plantar fascia goes, that non-contractile tissue, it doesn't contract. Is um, That's what we're gonna be rolling here, okay? So you can grab a tennis ball, a lacrosse ball, whatever you like, and you're just gonna roll. Now I also like to grab a wall here too, just so I can lean some of the body weight and I can dictate how much weight's going through that ball. Just hitting the arch of my foot, go slow, I tend to go fast on a lot of these things. Go slow, hold it, find a good spot, hold it there. You know, 30 seconds to a minute is sufficient, okay? To also take pressure off that plantar fascia in the bottom of your foot is calf rolling. So we go here. I like to chunk it up. We go here and then here. So two, two halves. First go here, roll at the bottom again, 30 seconds to a minute. For the sake of the video, I'm trying to save some time, so I'm not gonna go too long. And then I go up here, just rolling up up there. And then you can, we can go the whole thing, you can put more weight on it if you can tolerate it. Beautiful. I'm just going one leg right now. So we're pretending this foot has plantar fasciitis. Now, I'm gonna stretch. So I rolled, I'm gonna stretch. I'm gonna go just a generic calf stretch. Remember, we don't want that foot sliding out, falling in, falling in like this. We wanna keep that straight, forward. Hold it 30 seconds to a minute. You can come up, bend the knee a little bit. So now you're gonna hit, you're gonna feel it a little bit more because you're just using that foam roller, okay? Essentially all it does is it's providing some increased blood flow, but it's also waking up some of those uh, receptors in the muscle, in the skin. So that's where you're gonna get all these sensations, like you're feeling more of a stretch. Yeah. Good, next thing is to stabilize. So you rolled, you stretched. Now all of this stuff can be part of your pre, pre-workout routine, okay? Um, this next piece, which is just a, a low level hip stabilizer. So when we're talking about plantar fasciitis, a lot of things stem from up the chain. So it's usually, the foot is not usually the issue. The foot and the lower leg are working overtime to stabilize, okay? So that's why your foot and your calf keep grabbing on and trying to, to hold your foot and ankle in place, right? Because the hip is not doing what it's supposed to do. So the hip, so we're gonna, we're gonna aim at hip stabilizing here. So all we're gonna do, we're just gonna hold just a single leg. You can even put, if this is tough, you can just have one foot here. I'm not putting any weight through this back leg. I'm putting all my weight into this hip and this leg. So I'm here, I'm just stabilizing. You get a little tight brace in your core, good. And then to make it a little harder, you can come up. Now you're stabilizing into this hip. Okay, I'll take a look at this side, here. 
and you want a smooth angle going here, you don't want that knee coming in and you don't want that foot shifting out. A good way to put that plantar fascia on stretch, let it go like this. You see people squatting? That's a good way to you're really irritated too. So we want to have that foot here under you, stable, supportive, good. And then you want to take another step further, we can do toe taps. So I'm keeping that knee right underneath me, I'm sinking into my hip. Now my hip's getting lit up right now. I just did a workout before this, I can really feel the hip. You know, I can do taps. So you can hold this one, maybe depending on your tolerance, 10 to 30 seconds. Um, or if you want to do taps, you can do anywhere from eight reps to 20 reps. Get that hip primed. Same thing on this side. It's kind of like a dance move. Cool. All right, so we got the roll, we got the stretch, we got the stabilize. If you want any clarification on anything that I just mentioned in this whole video, comment below on YouTube or just shoot me an email at support at element26.co, um, the email that I sent you to this video from, okay? So take a look at the video again, let me know in the comments anything that you want clarification on, and then shoot me an email. I'll even take a DM on Instagram, whatever. Just say, hey Phil, I wanna, I wanna ask about XYZ on your plantar fasciitis video. I'll, I'll respond to you, don't worry. Have a great day, guys.